Good evening class. Uh, tonight's lesson is section 2 of chapter 2. So tonight we will talk about property rights. So remember for property rights, we have to know the extent. So there are principal property rights and also there are related rights. Uh, again, obviously relating to property. So remember the principal rights, SIM, uh, S stands for rights in specific partnership property. I will stand for interest in the partnership and M, it will refer to the right to participate in the management of the partnership. So remember here class, uh, I will no longer discuss uh, 1803, uh, right to participate in the management. So hindi ko na discuss yan. We have already discussed that when we uh, discussed 1800 up to 1803. Anyway, Remember also that there are related property rights. Ano yan? Right to reimbursement for advanced amount. So this is an uh, obligation of the partnership to the partner to reimburse kung ano man yung amounts na advance ng isang partner. And also, yung partnership has an obligation to indemnify yung partner for uh, risk in the consequence of management, as a consequence of management. What else? right to associate with another person in his share. So, pwedeng mag-appoint ng isang associate, ang isang um, partner. What else? Number three, right of access and inspection of partnership books. We already discussed this. Uh, subject to inspection at reasonable hours during business days. Also, remember class that books are kept by managing partners or active partners. What else? There must be, uh, there's also a right to true and full information of all things affecting the partnership. So anyway, class, uh, in addition to that, there is a right to formal account of partnership affairs under certain conditions. So remember yung um, ating enumeration dyan. Um, ano ba yung enumeration natin dyan? Wapo. So, if it wrong, wrongfully excluded, if it exists under the terms of any agreement, if um, there are profits obtained as under Article 1807 and letter O, uh, other circumstances. What else? And I think this is the last one, the right to ask for dissolution under certain conditions, which we'll discuss when we go to uh, Chapter 3 of your book. So, anyway, let's begin with the uh, specific partnership property. So, specific partnership property is covered by uh, 1811. So, remember, ano ba yung specific partnership property? It is a property, obviously, which is specific in nature. Remember, you're generic and specific. And number three, it belongs to the partnership. That is why it is a specific partnership property. Specific in nature, it is owned by the partnership. It is a property, common sense. So obviously, uh, if it is a specific partnership property, it must be possessed for partnership purposes. Yan. Kung merong uh, biniling sasakyan ang partnership kotse, ano lang example natin, kotse para madali. So kung bumili ng kotse ang isang partnership, obviously, the partnership can possess yung kotse. The partnership through the partners can possess yung specific partnership property na koche, but remember only for partnership purposes. Why? Because again, a partner has an equal right with the other partners to possess specific partnership property, but medyo stricto, the possession must be for partnership purposes only. So, tandaan nyo ang rules tungkol dito. If a partner uses specific partnership property for personal purposes, kung merong profit yan, it will belong to the partnership. What else? Um, if there is a partner who is wrongfully excluded in the possession of the specific partnership property, he can ask for accounting. Bakit nyo ako ine-exclude? Baka may ginagawa kayo dyan sa property na yan. So, pwede siyang mag-ask for a formal accounting. This is one of the exceptions. Number one, wrongfully excluded in the partnership. Remember, that's the first exception. What else? Um, also, if there is a partner who wrongfully, uh, exclusively possessed yung specific partnership property, 
uh, remember this is also a ground for dissolution but by agreement again pwede namang magpossess ang mga managing partners ng specific partnership property exclusively so pwede naman isurrender ang possession ng specific partnership property pero sa mga managing partners dapat what else um also pwede namang gamitin ito in relation to the first uh, rule that i discussed pwedeng gamitin ng specific partnership property for personal purposes provided there is consent from all of the other partners so anyway yun ang tandaan natin sa possession every partner has an equal right to possess specific partnership property but only for purposes of the partnership business what else number two um is the question in number two is uh is the right to specific partnership property assignable so this is what you have to remember sa isang kotse na pag-aari ng isang partnership actually tatlo silang may-ari doon kung tatlong partner that's a b and c let us just say silang tatlo ang may-ari doon so three of them they are co-owners in specific uh, partnership property itong kailangan yung tandaan <clears throat> dun sa kotse na yan yung kanilang um uh, yung kanilang share is an indivisible share it is impossible to determine kasi nga hindi naman natin pwedeng hati-hatiin yung sasakyan so because it is impossible to determine the beneficial interest of each partner in the specific partnership property or as applied to our example kasi hindi naman natin maitutukoy kung ano ang portion or share ng isang partner dun sa kotse remember as a rule it is not an assignable uh, right so alam ko may right ako sa kotse kung akong partner ako si A meron akong right sa kotse na yan but remember kung meron akong creditor hindi ko pwedeng ibigay sa kanya or i-assign sa kanya yung right ko dun sa specific partnership property bakit? because Number one, it is yun nga partnership property, and number two, it is difficult to determine my beneficial interest in the specific partnership property. Now, the exception to this one is that pwedeng i-assign sa creditor yung uh, right to specific partnership property if um, all of the partners will consent. So, if all of the partners will consent. Tapos, uh, inassign nila sa isang debtor yung uh, specific partnership property para pambayad ng utang. There is no problem because the partners gave all of the uh, consent. Yan. All of their consent. What else? Number three. Um, yung bang specific partnership property. Remember, the undivided interest in a partnership property it, is it subject to attachment or execution? So, please remember the term attachment or execution. Magkaiba yan. Yung attachment, halimbawa ako ay isang uh, creditor. Gusto kong maningil sa isang debtor. Magde-demand ako, syempre, maghahanap ako ng property niya para pwedeng ipang uh, bayad sa akin. So, ngayon, para ma-reserve yung property niya, I'm, I'm trying to explain this in the simplest um, way na kailangan ko ay na, na kaya ko so anyway uh, para ma-reserve yung property di ba dinedemanda ko nga yung debtor kasi nga wala siyang pambayad sa akin eh alam ko meron siyang lupa yan ganyan lupa so yung lupa na yan um, ang gagawin ko ipapareserve ko siya para kung sakaling nanalo ako sa case namin yung kanyang lupa ay pwede kong gamitin na pambayad sa, pwede niyang gamitin sa pambayad sa utang niya sa akin so ang tawag dyan class is attachment it is um, putting yung um, uh, par property in the custody of the court para later on pambayad doon sa utang ng debtor. In execution naman, after na magkaroon ng decision sa isang uh, case, let us say walang na-attach na property, tapos walang masingil si um, court mula sa debtor, pero meron siyang mga ibang properties. So, yung properties na yan, pwedeng i-execute yung decision na mabayaran si uh, creditor by selling off yung mga properties. So, that is uh, execution. Nakikita nyo ba yung ano, class? Yung mga 
niririmata yung bahay, niririmata yung lupa, tapos pinapa binebenta sa public auction, pambayad yung, ng utang yung proceeds dun sa public auction. Ito yung execution class. Yung mga halimbawa ng utang kayo, tapos hinihila yung aircon nyo, yung sopa nyo, yung TV nyo, tapos ibinebenta sa public auction, yan ay execution. Kasi hindi kayo nakapagbayad ng utang nyo. Akala nyo, drama lang sa TV, no? Pagka hindi kayo nakapagbayad sa utang nyo, they can get your property, sell it at public auction, because they are only trying to execute yung decision. Now, uh, remember here, the question in number 3 is, yung interest ba, yung undivided interest ba ng isang partner sa specific partnership property, is it subject to attachment or execution? Pwede bang ipareserve ng mga creditors yan sa attachment? Or pwede bang ipambayad ng utang uh, sa execution? Dahil meron ng decision ang court na may utang nga itong si debtor slash partner. So, remember here, obviously, your debtor, eh, your partner is also indebted to another person. Kaya nga pinapa-attach yung kanyang interest sa specific partnership property doon ng mga creditors niya. So, remember here, class, the answer is uh, not subject to attachment or execution. Bakit na naman? Kasi nga, undetermined ang interest mo sa isang specific partnership property. Meron, meron kang utang sa uh, creditors mo. Ako si A, may utang ako sa creditor ko. Tapos, ang property na lang na natitira ko is ang, ang asset na lang na pwede kong gawin or yun na lang natitira sa akin is yung interest ko in the specific partnership property or yung undivided interest ko sa kotse. Pwede bang i-attach yan ng um, mga creditors kung personal, hindi pwede. Because remember class that it belongs to the partnership and number two, my interest is undetermined as of yet. So, yun ang tandaan natin. However, property can be attached or um, executed upon if it is for partnership debt. So, kung utang ng partnership, pwedeng i-attach ang partnership property. Uh, same rule in case of support. So, uh, legal support or support ng mga anak ninyo, hindi rin pwedeng gamitin ang specific partnership property bilang pambayad ng legal support. Uh, what else? Remember also the second uh, uh, property right, yung interest in the partnership. Please take note of the definition of profits and surplus. They are in your book. So anyway, the nature of partner's interest in the partnership is obviously the share in the profits after dissolution. Share in the surplus pala after dissolution. So, uh, share in the profits during the lifetime of the partnership and share in the surplus after dissolution. So, yun ay tandaan nyo, personal property na lang partner. Sa kanya na yun. Kasi pagka nag-dissolve yung partnership, may surplus edi di distribute yan sa mga partners na isa-isa. So, ngayon, uh, ito ay, remember, uh, personal property na ng isang partner. What else? Um, number uh, number two, um, kailangan ding tandaan, being, being a personal property, ito nakalagay malinaw, it can be assigned, attached, and also subject to legal support. Kasi nga, yan na yung share mo sa profit eh. Kaya pwede nang i-distribute yan. It is to the partner, it is personal property. Yan na yung share mo sa surplus. Again, pwedeng i-distribute yan. It is personal property. What else? Um, extent of partner's interest. So, um, ang tandaan nyo dyan, ang partner's interest is yung balance after all of the debts have been uh, paid and all of the credits have been uh, collected. Yan. Now, conveyance or assignment of interest in the partnership is covered by 1813. Baka isipin nyo, this is similar to the provisions of 1804. Yung uh, 1804 talks about an associate. So, remember, an assignee and an associate is different. In 1804, what they talk about there is an uh, associate. So, ang associate 
yung uh, share ng isang partner, parang sineshare lang niya dun sa kanyang associate. So, imbis na ang, ang partner ang tatanggap ng uh, isang ng share niya sa profit, ang tatanggap ng share niya sa profit is yung kanyang uh, associate or subpartner. However, in conveyance or assignment of interest, yung assignee actually um, sells, donates, or mortgage yung kanyang um, interest in the partnership to another person. So, here, talagang binenta niya yung interest niya, dinonate, pinamigay niya, or sinangla niya sa ibang tao. So, hindi katulad sa associate, oh, share ka dito, ganun lang yan. Sama ka dito, ganyan, tanggapin mo lang, ganyan. Ito, binenta talaga niya, pinamigay talaga niya, sinangla niya talaga. So, yun ang pinagkaiba ng uh, conveyance or assignment. Also, in uh, associate, yung associate, will receive only a portion of the share of a partner. But in um, assignment or conveyance, yung buong interest ng isang partner in the partnership is conveyed or assigned to the third person. So anyway, what is the effect of assignment of interest in the partnership? It has actually... Um, Several effects yan. Para hindi, hindi, na ako, hindi ko na matandaan kung ilan eh. Pero anyway, we will go through them one by one. The first one if is the partnership may still remain despite the um, selling of the interest of a partner in the partnership. Also, it can happen that there if there is assignment of interest, the partnership may be dissolved. But remember, only when it is clear that the partners contemplated at and intended a dissolution. Uh, kasi, wini-withdraw na yung kanilang entire interest from uh, the partnership. So, yun ang kailangan nating tandaan. Uh, hindi naman porky kasi binenta ang interest or inassign ng interest, nagkakaroon na ng dissolution. Hindi matik yan. Kaya nga, number one, the partnership may still remain. What else are the effects? Number two, the assignee or conveyee does not necessarily become a partner. Uh, totoo naman to. Same is true with an associate. Binili lang naman nila yung share. And uh, if nagpatuloy pa rin yung partnership, the assignee or conveyee does not become a partner. What else? Um, dahil nga hindi siya partner, obviously, the assignee cannot interfere in the management of the partnership. They cannot demand information, accounting, and inspection of uh, the books. That is a uh, common sense. Pero syempre, may rights din naman sila. Wala nga namang wala silang rights, di ba? Bakit pa sila bumili ng interest? So, the rights of the assignee, remember also the rights of the assignee as provided for in 1813. Wala nga namang wala silang rights. Uh, remember, the rights is the rights of an assignee is to get whatever profits na makukuha dapat nung kanyang assignor. What else? Number two, to avail himself of the usual remedies in case of fraud in management. What else? To receive interest in case of dissolution. So this will refer to your surplus um, surplus after the partnership has been dissolved. Tatanggapin din ng assignee yan. What else? To ask for annulment <clears throat> in case na itong assignee was only um, um, anong tawag dito? Was only at uh, um, only entered into the partnership was induced to enter into the partnership because of any of the vices of consent again remember your vices of consent consent violence intimidation mistake fraud and undue influence or if the assignee himself is incapacitated to give consent remember this is avoidable contract that's why annulment is available as a remedy to the assignee whose uh, only reason for entering into the contract is because of the inducement uh, or because of the vices of consent or because of incapacity. What else also add to that number, uh, num letter E, number E. Anyway, letter E, the assignee also has a right to demand an accounting when the partnership is already dissolved. But remember, the accounting period Bala na kayo dyan, mas alam niyo yan. Um, the account pala can cover, should cover only the date 
from the last accounting which has been agreed upon by all the partners. So from dun lang magsisimula up to uh, present. So the last topic for tonight is yung charging order. This is covered by 1814. So in 1814, remember class, um, bago ka mag-apply ng charging order, the first thing that you have to do if you are the creditor of a partner. So itong partner sa isang partnership, let us say A, is a partner in ABC partnership. Si A, meron siyang personal na utang sa akin. So let us say ako yung creditor. So, let us say also na class itong si A ay wala na siyang mga personal properties. But, let us say also na yung partnership is afloat. Okay naman siya, may kinikita siya. So, kung ako itong personal creditor ni uh, A na isang uh, partner, ano ang pwede kong gawin? Siyempre, obviously, para makasingil ako, kailangan kong magdemanda. Now, if nanalo na ako sa kaso ko kung saan sinisingil ko si uh, A who is a debtor partner, edi meron na akong judgment. Now, if I already secured a judgment, remember, doon sa court na nag-issue ng judgment na yon, I can apply for a charging uh, order. Yan. So, yung charging order na yon, um, it will subject the interest of the debtor partner in the partnership with payment of the unsatisfied uh, amount of the judgment in my favor. So, ang mangyayari dyan, lahat ng um, profits that is supposed to be received by A from the partnership ay mapupunta na sa akin. Kasi nga, meron ngang charging order. So, his interest in the partnership is charged. Yan. Kaya yung iba ang tawag nila dyan sa charging order is charging interest because yung uh, interest ng isang partner will be charged to pay for his personal debt to me. Now, what you have to remember here in charging order is you have to relate it with 1827. In 1827, uh, yung tanda natin na pagka partnership uh, property, ang preferred dyan is partnership creditors. So, kahit na may charging order yung interest ni A, kung may sariling mga creditors ang partnership, yung mga creditors muna ng partnership ang unang babayaran using yung interest ni A sa partnership. Before, babayaran yung personal uh, utang ni A sa akin because of the charging order. Now, what you have to remember also about a charging order is that it can be redeemed. Yan. So, ah, uh, Yung interest charged may be redeemed with the separate property of any one or more of the partners. So, para nga naman huminto na yung, uh, uh, yung pagtanggap ko ng profit na share ni A from the partnership, pwedeng i-redeem na lang nila yung uh, interest ni uh, A. Yung baga, tinubos nila yung uh, interest ni A mula sa akin. Kaya, ang pwede nilang ipagtubos dyan, remember, is the, sep is the separate property of one or more of the partners. They will, they will help A out, si B at si C. Pwede nilang tubusin yung uh, interest niya mula sa akin by using their separate property. Also, pwede namang uh, yung partnership ang tumubos sa interest ni um, uh, A na nakasangla sa akin. But remember, if it is the partnership or partnership property is used, kailangan uh, it has the consent of all of the partners whose interests are not yet uh, charged or sold. So, yun ang tandaan natin sa isang charging order. Anyway, uh, we will discuss more of that when we have our class on Saturday. So, this will be it for our lecture. I will see you Saturday class.